Good morning. This is Tom Poole from Cloud Nation, and we thank you for joining us this morning. Um, this morning's webinar is, is really kind of a technical webinar where we're going to actually take a look at what's under the hood with Cloud Nation, the technology that drives it. Um, we've done several webinars over the last couple of weeks that we've kind of laid out the business model that supports Cloud Nation. And what we've heard back from our listeners, and, and by the way, thank you very much for your feedback, is that it sounds like we've done a, a good job of explaining the, the business element of Cloud Nation. And what some of our um, listeners have asked for is they say, you know, let's, let's take a, a deep dive on the technology. We really want to understand what, what drives this. And so um, today I'm joined by our CTO, Robert Christensen, who is here to, um, to answer any of the questions that you've got from a, from a deep technical perspective. But I guess the best way to get started is just to get started. So um, kind of what we're looking to accomplish today is number one is let's get technical. Um, we're going to start with a brief overview of the current shortcomings and how that equates to demand for cloud solutions providers. If you've been on a couple of our recent webinars, um, first, thanks. And, and next, there's going to be four or five slides here that are going to be duplicative, but they're important just to kind of set the stage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into um, our Cloud Nation community platform. Um, specifically, what do you as members get? And then how does the technology actually work from an end user perspective? Uh, we'll be going into detail on pricing and billing and how that works and what the options are. And then we're going to provide you an overview of the Cloud Nation community portal. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started is we want you to feel comfortable asking questions. Um, Robert is great at distilling technology down to very simple terms and going as deep as you want to go pretty much. And so we would really encourage you to ask questions. Um, we'll reserve some time at the end for Q&A. However, if we are talking about something that you have a question about, um, don't be shy about asking it in your um, in your GoToWebinar interface here, you've got a little IM or instant message thing. Um, Jenny Hallmark is, is joining us today, and she'll be fielding these questions and then asking Robert or I. And then the last thing will be that um, probably sometime early tomorrow, we're going to email everyone that's on this webinar this slide deck. So you'll need to take notes on the contents. Um, and then the last thing is enjoy. Um, maybe what we can do is we can start off with, and I'll, I'll lob this over to Robert Christensen. And, and Robert, maybe you can pick it up here and, and kind of give our listeners an idea of what the options actually are for resources. Hey, Robert. Yes. You move around. It's pretty noisy, so you're going to have to kind of sit tight, I think. There was Apologize. a lot of feedback there. Okay. Yep. So Robert, we're on the slide, options for resellers, and I thought maybe what you could do is you could um, you could share with our listeners maybe some of the options that you've seen over the last few years for resellers that want to get into a cloud solutions practice. Thanks, Tom. Um, we've really seen it boiling down to four basic areas that uh, resellers can or have options to, and this has basically been voiced by uh, the reseller community to us. Uh, you can build your own, and, and obviously this is something that uh, uh, on the surfaces can be fairly daunting. There's a lot of you know, leasing or buying of hardware. You can uh, go to co-location facilities or have your own uh, data centers. You're going to need to purchase or negotiate um, SPLA licensing agreement with Microsoft and potentially with Citrix and other vendors. Uh, put in what's called a VSPP program for uh, VMware if you're going to do that as your hypervisor levels. And all the networking and routing routers and, and switching, et cetera, that's necessary, all the SANs and stuff. And that's, that's a pretty complicated, big, uh, big job. Um, I think it's like something like a, a technologist's dream to be able to get into that many toys and, and get going. But on a business perspective, it can be rather daunting and very expensive. Uh, the second one would be is actually engage a hosting company and uh, kind of build out your own environment. So you would go to a Rackspace or a Sabbath or a, a Softlayer or something like that, you know, and say, hey, or, uh, or Amazon and say, hey, Give me a bunch of VMs, um, and then uh, I'm going to want to put together my 
my clients' applications, et cetera. And then I'm going to need to architect all of the pieces that are necessary um, to provision all that stuff and to deliver it in a high availability way, um, as well as uh, delivering the connectivity to that. Um, and uh, having actually uh, done both these, these paths before, the second one can be as equally as complicated as the first one because you're basically having to go and work with these companies to architect a system that's uh, multi-tenancy, highly redundant, and uh, you're basically just paying them the money and a profit to host your stuff and your, your hardware, et cetera, all the same facilities. So equally as complicated, you still have all the same software requirements and the networking and stuff like that has to go in place. The difference is they're providing the hardware. Uh, the, la the third one is really interesting, and you, know, you, you hear the term born in the cloud, and you can literally piece together cloud apps and solutions, like an ERP system from NetSuite or something like that, and you pull together Google Docs and, or Office 365, and you bring together and you bring together all these little um, applets and various pieces out of the cloud, and you architect and piecemeal that together. <coughs> and uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of the existing clients that you may have in your, in your world as a reseller, are not going to just toss out what they have done and have, have their whole business running on for new or SaaS-based applications uh, out of the box um, uh, today. You know, it's, uh, it's a very complicated process from switching over from system to system unless they're very small. Um, and, or, and then the last one, Robert, I think we lost your connection. And is in deliver them through a cloud nation platform. Cloud nation platform. Okay. Is that good? There we go. Yeah, absolutely. We lost yeah. you for a minute there, Robert. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, hopefully you're connected and, and, and ready to go. But let's let's move on. Yeah. So we've got a few slides here that'll just kind of talk about the opportunity. And, and again, if you've joined us in another webinar, these slides are going to be familiar with you. I'll go through them kind of quickly, but but they really are impactful and, and it. It, it, it explains the opportunity, I think, pretty well. And, and what we say here is, what do these companies have in common? And and clearly, one thing they have in common is they're all, I would say, you know, the, the big players in what we know as as cloud computing. But there's also another thing that they have in common. And all of them don't do office visits. So basically, what the feedback we're getting from SMBs, small and medium-sized businesses is basically they say buying cloud computing from a service provider with a local presence is either critical or important. Now again, if we go back to the previous slide and say all these guys, they, they provide cloud solutions, but none of them do office visits. And so this is a significant opportunity for IT professionals. And the reason why it is, is on this slide is the big companies, really what they're interested in doing is they're interested in owning the cloud pipes, if you will. If, if you think about Amazon and e-commerce, e Amazon's objective was to own the e-commerce pipes. Well, the big companies are looking to own the cloud pipes, but if you take a look at it in terms of projected revenue, is that those cloud pipes represent about 24% of the technology cloud business. The services component represents about 76%. And, and these numbers are, are huge. I mean, they're almost so big that it's unfathomable. But essentially, the, the, the cloud computing market is projected to be about $177 billion by 2015. And of that, I think $134 billion or something around that is, is actually the service-related revenue. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, here we said the current cloud model is broken. And it, and it really is. We're, we haven't got it together into an ecosystem. We'll be going into that in a little bit. But basically what we've got is we've got the major players. They're ready to sell their solution. But unless somebody actually provides the cloud integration services, that just won't happen. We're seeing IT pros, our community, they're looking to have a comprehensive solution and really having a difficult time figuring out exactly what that is. And then, frankly, we're having the small and medium-sized businesses right now voicing frustration because they're looking for a comprehensive solution and they don't know where to go. So here we have a, a red, fast sports car. And what we say, really, is this what IT has become? And we say, yeah. 
kind of. It's basically what's happening is, is IT has traditionally been a very internally focused position. Um, and the new IT represents more of a supply chain manager than an internally focused um, server maintenance, things like that, is essentially what's going to happen is your clients will be asking you to integrate a variety of not only on-premises applications, but also SaaS or cloud-based applications. And really what they're doing is they're looking to you to put all, all those pieces together and do just like what an automobile manufacturer would do is that they get the, the tires from one place and the seat from another and the steering wheel from another. But really when the consumer shows up to drive the car, all they really want to do is turn on the key, put the car in drive it, and go. That's what you want to be able to provide to your clients. You want to be able to put all the pieces together, give them the keys to it, allow them to turn on the key and go. If you do this, if you're able to accomplish this, basically what you'll do is you'll position yourself as an indispensable resource, not only to your current clients, but the wonderful thing is, is there's not a lot of people out there that have good comprehensive cloud solutions. And your ability to deliver that makes the world of small and medium-sized businesses essentially a green field for you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch gears. We said, let's get technical. I've kind of I hope anyways, laid kind of a foundation for why there's demand for this in the marketplace and why it's important. And I think at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to lob it over to Robert, our CTO, to kind of talk a little bit about the Cloud Nation platform. So Robert, if you're good, here we go. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, it, this is really a, a, a pivotal, pivotal um, conversation around um, why a reseller would choose to come with Cloud Nation as opposed to uh, other opportunities that are available out there. And I suspect that if you're on this call today, you've already gone to a lot of the other um, opportunities for providing a cloud services. And um, if you are like many of the folks that have come back to us and say, hey, they're just not solving the problem for us, uh, we've been listening. So what Cloud Nation platform is really a comprehensive platform for the resellers from the ground up, and it's where you're going to be able to architect and build up the applications and data that are specific to your clients. Uh, very rarely um, uh, does a reseller or a bar get involved with a client when they're just buying Microsoft Office or, or Google Apps out of the box and they connect the device to it. That's really not a whole lot of business for you guys. It actually takes a lot of time. That doesn't, it's very profitable. You're actually looking to support legal, financial, uh, health care. Uh, you name the, ver the verticals and you have applications or at least the infrastructure that you've been managing for them either on premise um, or and on and at the endpoints of desktop. So what this allows us to do is to actually Put, in, put those applications and data together and then deliver them through the Cloud Nation platform. So, Tom, can you move on to the next one? Um, so what that really means, here's the, the foundational stuff. This is what we call table stakes just to get into it. So geo-redundancy, uh, the data centers, uh, being able to connect to locations that have low latency, uh, N plus one architecture, uh, you know, obviously at the uptimes uh, that are critical to, for what we consider the SMB, SMBs out there. Um, uh, it's ISO 9001 certified, so there's a process to be managed across them. Obviously, the security for connectivity and our high availability and all our data systems as well. And these are just the, the, the getting in points. So, Tom, can you jump on to the next one? Um, so, let's talk a little bit about just the mechanics of this. And, and, and if, you're, if you see what we're doing here, we have your, your client or your customers over there on the right. That's a user. And over on the far left, you have Cloud Nation's reseller uh, manage. Uh, managed services, servers, excuse me. So what we do is we provision um, virtual machines, uh, 2008 R2 servers, um, or the server structure that you're looking for, very much like you're going to get from a Rackspace or an Amazon or Microsoft or anybody else out there. Um, you're going to take on ownership of that particular VM. You're going to uh, install your own applications. You're going to manage the services. You're going to customize it for that app, uh, for that client. You're going to have the local admin. It's going to be within a VLAN. It's going to be completely protected and isolated within the multi-tenancy environment. You're going to be able to scale up the CPU and the RAM and the storage options. So when you have that that application server in place and um, and you have it working the way that you're looking for, and you've installed the services that were otherwise installed on premise, 
you take that and then you plug it into the Cloud Nation platform. And really what that is is a whole series of, of things that you otherwise would have had to build yourself um, and then you would want to be there common for all your customers. So client A is going to have one set of server or servers and client B is going to have a different set, well, maybe legal, one might be financial. But you're going to plug both of them in to a common platform. So that's a Citrix Cloud Services, you know, and if you're familiar with ZenApp, this is a ZenApp delivered um, uh, hosted desktop uh, through our environment. So your applications are coming through a ZenApp world. Um, we have well over t done 250 virtualized applications that are already done. Um, and uh, Tom will probably talk about this a little later, but if you're familiar with the, the Zen world and the App V world, there's over 5,000 apps that have already been virtualized. That if they run on the uh, Windows uh, server platform, then they're going to run in our environment. Uh, backup and threat protection is already in place. So, for example, your client's data on uh, inside the cloud is already redundant and backed up off-site. Back and restore facilities are there. We can talk a little bit deeper if you like. If you have questions about the frequency of backups and stuff like that, but you don't have to put a backup solution in place. File should, you'll be able to manage all those applications and the users and the active, the multi-tenancy active directory structure using um, the product called Cloud Portal Services Manager, which isolates you from having to understand all the OUs and the various pieces of an active directory that a multi-tenancy environment would have. Um, and you you have you don't have to need to know that, but you still get a lot of the control over who gets permissions, what applications are deployed, access to data and endpoint devices for allowing you know USB ports and drives and that type of thing. Um, all file shares and file servers are provided as part of the ecosystem, so you actually can mount drives that are going to be going to these customers um, uh, for these services for all the data. Um, all the licensing services are in place. For example, you don't have to buy Citrix. You, it comes as part of the connection of the vDesktop service. You don't have to buy ZenApp. You don't have to provision up all the licensing servers and the load balancers. Those are already in place. Um, the SQL servers and line of businesses, that we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I want to let you know that all the SQL servers, you can have a dedicated SQL server for your line of businesses or any shared infrastructure if that's the case for a low, low impact. Um, there is a user access portal that's branded for the reseller. There's a whole billing and provisioning piece that comes with this that Tom will cover in a little bit. This is a monthly service, so as your clients scale and um, may uh, scale up and add new people, they can do it on a month-to-month -month basis. You'll have pricing to plug into this whole platform on a month-to-month -month basis, no long-term commitment. Uh, each user, when they connect to this through the virtual desktop and all these services, has unlimited bandwidth access up to 100 megabits per second out of their virtual desktops, which is a huge benefit for people who are using like a NetSuite or those type of things where they're downloading big chunks of data into their um, browser sessions. All the routing of firewalling put in place, there's not necessary for a VPN. You can access this whole infrastructure from an HTTP, HTTPS client a Citrix receiver on any device, anywhere, any time. And so when you have that kind of architecture, you now have a delivery mechanism that uh, would take in a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money to build. And you can go from client to client to client and as a reseller, you now can specialize in what it is that they want and you can handle their applications, manage that first line support, your service contracts can stay in place, allowing you to give that, that touch and feel that you've always had with them. All you're doing now is moving that on-prem server into our infrastructure, and now you're delivering it down to an infrastructure that really is highly mobile, highly, highly scalable, and highly secure. So Tom, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. So why a virtual desktop? So this is, this is the key here. It's kind of like buying a, a big, big screen TV with no cable. Uh, it's all about the apps and the data. The delivery mechanism is a virtual desktop, and it's a Microsoft Windows Zen app delivery model. Um, it allows for your customers to access all their apps and data on any device, any time. The employees have an increasingly need for to bring their own devices. So they're going to bring iPads and Android devices and Macs and thin clients and PCs and old PCs. Uh, the virtual desktop allows the company to control their valuable information so that, that all that stuff stays in the data center. So if, if you've ever used a, a Zen app world or uh, any kind of Citrix receiver products, 
you'll, you know that it's the screen image that they're seeing. They're not actually getting the data. So someone's at the airport with their iPad or the laptop and it's stolen. The, you just replace the device. The data never leaves the, the data center. It, uh, you don't have to worry about you know, uh, software that strips the, that PC of the information or that device of the information. Uh, the, this also eliminates data silos, so people are walking around with files on their on their on their de uh, devices. It makes it really hard um, for you to keep things synchronized. If they're all accessing it through a virtual desktop, it keeps it all in one place. I'm going to move on there, Tom. Thank you. So the security with that, I touched on it briefly, but uh, I want I, I'm, I'm, I'm making the assumption that uh, the folks on the call that may or may not understand the nature of a Citrix uh, receiver world where you're installing it on a, on a device, it's actually a delivered image across the wire as opposed to the actual data living on the device. So it never leaves our data center. And when you control the access to USB ports on that endpoint device like the PC or the, the, the access to a local drive, you can literally prevent people from moving data out of the infrastructure to an endpoint device and completely shut that endpoint system down, or you can open it wide up depending on what the, the customer is open for. And you, as the reseller, have control over that. So let's talk about line of business servers. The, um, this is always a question with resellers. Hey, I want to be able to do a, a SAP Business One, or I want to put a Great Plains um, a Dynamics, or I have a Act with a SQL Server, or, or a Sage, or whatever, and my customer's business runs on this, and I want to be able to handle it. Um, this is absolutely within your control. You have local admin rights over all the uh, VMs that are inside our environment that are dedicated to you as a reseller. You let us know if you need to spin up some more SQL servers, or if you need to spin up an IIS server, or if you need to put an Apache in there, whatever that you're looking to do. Um, you let us know what those are. You tell us the configuration, the CPUs, and the RAM, and then you take on that that control of that, and then you manage it. Um, you're, we um, are not the experts on that information that's necessary for running that business for that customer. You are. So. When you do that and you test it and you and they validate that the, your solutions are provisioned in the Cloud Nation network, you are then going to our Cloud Nation um, portal where you're going to uh, deploy out the virtual desktops and assign the applications to each of the users um, in a provisioning platform called the CPSM. Uh, it allows you to access the and to uh, assign those privilege to those end users, and you're charged on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, for that connectivity of that user and that's at a wholesale to that user and then you sell it for whatever you want to sell it for. But the basics is, is that as a reseller, you're taking control of the line of business. So uh, just so you understand, the, the, all of our data centers are in, uh, all in the three time zones. Um, you're able to have your data, your clients, uh, VMs, as well as their data and their connectivity into a particular location. So uh, very, very uh, solid layout and it reduces latency for connectivity if you're familiar with uh, uh, going back and forth to the data center. Uh, next slide. So uh, Tom, did you want to jump onto this one here? Yeah, maybe I'll pick this up. Is, okay. is that here's, here's a place that we're, we're not only going to look here at, at your custom portal, but we're also going to actual jump into it and, and, and I'm going to give you an example of how you would provision one of your clients. So our members, um, you, an MSP, a reseller, you have your own branded portal. As you can see on, on the header there, that's where your branding goes. Um, again, we have about 250 or more Windows-based applications that are tested in this virtual environment, and line of business applications can be added as needed. But rather than just look at this, I thought it would be helpful for, for us actually to jump in and take a look at a um, at our actual store and to say let's let's get into the back end here and take a look at how you would provision one of your clients so right here what we've got is you can see right up here it says cloud nation it wouldn't say cloud nation here it might say powered by cloud nation if that's what you wanted but basically what you would do is you would walk in and you would say okay so let's say for an example that this is a an accounting firm and you would go in here and you would click here and you'd say we want seven uh, V desktop set up. We want to set up Microsoft standard for seven people. And as you can see, as we're doing this, 
it's adding up the monthly charge. And you can say, we also want to set up Microsoft Exchange for seven people. And then right down here, you come down and look at this, you can see exactly what it would cost on a monthly basis for your client. And you would sit there and do this with your client. Basically, they would hit the button here that says subscribe. And up will come uh, a, a screen that basically says, okay, here's what you're getting, and here's how much it would cost on a monthly basis. Now, let's again say that this is, again, these are all no contracts, month to month, but let's just say as an accounting firm, all of a sudden tax season came up. And you would want to then go back with your client and say, well, you know what, for the next couple months, we actually want to ramp that up to 13. And we'll take this up to 13. And we'll take this up to 13. Again, this is all done on a month to month basis. So it's going to cost your client a couple, a couple hundred extra dollars for that period, but the nice thing about the cloud is it allows them to ramp up or down on a monthly basis. And so, again, in this in this incident, basically what they would be doing is you would hit subscribe, and they would be changing their plan and upgrading it. And then, frankly, after April 15th, they could go right back in here and reduce it back down to their their core staff. They can say, let's go seven, seven, and seven, and all of a sudden, on a monthly basis. They're back down to their baseline. Now, when we're taking a look at the your actual unified billing solution here, basically what you're seeing is, is again, this is something that you would be working through with your clients. And this is, this is a very simplified version. And again, it's up to you as a reseller what items you want on your menu, if you want to think of it that way, is, is that you may be um, uh, an MSP or a reseller that's focused exclusively on the financial services industry. And so you might have some line of business applications that are specific to that industry. You might be more of a generalist, in which case what we can do is we can build this out to represent your needs as, as a reseller. Go back to uh, full screen mode here. Um, Many of you have asked us about pricing, and this is just an example of, of how it works with the Cloud Nation portal and, and as resellers, how really what we do is, is you'll see in, there's a, a, a column here that says wholesale, and then there's a column that says direct MSRP. And really what we do is when, when you sign up with Cloud Nation, you have the ability to set your own pricing. So as an example here, what you could do is you could go right up here where it says 25%, and basically what you're doing is you're building in a 25% margin on a monthly basis for everything that you're selling. You can increase that or decrease that based on, I would say, your expertise and the value proposition. And one of the things that we want to, you know, I, I always think about this, and, and it's, you know, in, in the absence of value, all there is is price. And, and this is not a uh, strictly a, a, a bottom line price game, and you, you don't want to get into a situation where you're racing to the bottom. And so one of the things with Cloud Nation, we'll go into this in a little bit, that we really tried to do with our community portal is integrate not only initial Cloud Essentials training, but also ongoing training and certification that allows you to go in there and add the value so that it, it is more than price. Um, you know, one of the guys I know here in the business says, you know, a lot of times when people start to talk with their clients, one of the first things that come up is, is price. And and if you really take a look at that, why does it happen that way? And it's essentially because in many cases, that's one of the only common denominators both you and your client have is the client in many cases can't talk a lot about technology. And you may or may not be able to talk specifically about their business, but at the end of the day, you both understand pricing. And what we're showing here on this screen is that you have the absolute flexibility. You can either say that I want to have 25% margin on all this, or you can go into each one of these individual cells and change them with pricing so that you may say, well, with some of these stuff, entry-level things, I want to take a 15% margin. On some of the other specialty items, I'd like to take a 30% margin. Um, the next one is we've had a lot of questions about billing, 
and how that works. And essentially what we've got is, is again, listening to, to our community. And, and we've had some people that have come to us and said, y you know what, is, is I, I don't like doing all that billing stuff. Is, is, can you guys handle that for us? And, and the simple answer is yes. Is we offer two different tiers of billing. One's full service billing, or basically what Cloud Nation does is we come in and we handle all the billing. Um, billing takes place on a monthly basis and our members receive one check every month. And, and then the other one is we've got other resellers that have come to us and said, no, you know what, it's really important for us that we own the billing. In fact, what we like to do is we like to provide our clients with a comprehensive bill on a monthly basis that includes not only their solutions, in other words, their cloud solutions, but also our services. And we want that to go to them on one invoice so it's very clear and very compelling for our clients. And we offer both of those. And so it really depends on your need as a reseller, how you would like to handle it. But we've set it up on our back end. We've developed it into our system to handle it either way. The next few slides we're going to go through is, is our portal. And, and part of the thing that we did in the development of CloudNation, and you know, realistically, it took us, oh, six or seven months to develop this portal. And these are just some screenshots of the portal that I, that I took as recently as yesterday. But within our portal, we have a, a member member area. We have a solutions area, which is basically where your store is that I just that I just showed you. We have a, a, a pretty robust support area, our learning area, which is our cloud academy. We've got our knowledge base. We've got a section that's called ideas that we'll go into in a minute that's just very powerful for us to listen to our community, answers and news. And we'll go through each one of those pretty briefly. And, and if you have questions, by all means ask, or at the end of our presentation of our webinar here, we'll, we'll try to leave a little bit of time for Q&A. So I'm gonna go quickly through these, but the knowledge section is, is probably pretty similar to knowledge bases you've seen in the past. And, and the nice thing is it ties directly into our support and our ticketing function. So if we have a, a ticket that comes in for a specific, you know, here at the very, it, um, on the screenshot you see Citrix Error 2320. Well, if, if you had a question about that and that was something that came in as a, a ticketed item in our support, what we could do is if we came up with a solution or several solutions to that, we could automatically transition that from our support into our knowledge base. Answers. Um, so part of the advantage of being an exclusive member of Cloud Nation is that you have a community that you work with and you can help everyone else in the community to grow. And our, our answers section is either you can access it, as you can see right here within our portal, only available to our members, or what you can do is you can access this via your mobile device. And so if you're at a client's office and you run into a situation and you don't have the answer to it, basically what you can do is you can immediately go to your cell phone, your smartphone, you can ask the question, and then not only can the community answer it, but our support team will immediately see that and can go to work on making sure that we have an answer for you as quickly as possible. Ideas. This is probably one of my favorite components of our community portal. And the reason is, is far be it from us to figure out what's important to our members. What we want to do is we really want to, if you will, rank stack the things that are important to you and to growing your company. And so basically what you can do is you, you can probably see on the screenshot where it says promote or demote. And basically what we have is we've got different categories and you can go into each category and we've got ideas about the things that Cloud Nation should be working on, should be developing, should be providing for our members. And so as an example, we've got a, a category called certifications where we go in and we say, okay, what certification is more important to you from an advanced level? Would it be a, a data migration specialist? Would it be a certified cloud engineer? Or would it be a certified security specialist? And we let you tell us what we should focus on. New technology. What kind of new technology should we be bringing into the platform? What are your clients asking about that we're currently not delivering? Ongoing education. Just an example here is 
We want to know what's important to you. Where do you feel that you could learn more? Where do you feel additional education would be valuable? On a weekly basis, we'll be providing webinars, not just like this webinar that explains Cloud Nation, but specifically for our members that will be providing either product-based or business-based further development to help you with your cloud solutions practice. You can see sales and marketing, support enhancements, vertical markets. With the vertical markets, you know what? Is it healthcare? Is it education? Is it financial services? Um, or is it legal? What, where should we be focusing on delivering our members solutions for those vertical markets? And, and, and again, this is probably one of the most powerful and uh, elements of our community portal. And, and as members, you have the ability to go in and vote anytime on any of these. The Cloud Nation Academy is our academy starts with the Cloud Essentials Certification Program. And basically what that is is about eight hours, maybe up to 10 hours of very specific training, not only on the cloud, what the cloud is, how the cloud works, how you can communicate the cloud with your clients and with your prospects. But also we go really into the weeds as it relates to how the Cloud Nation portal works. How can you use it to your advantage? How can you use it to your client's advantage? So here's how it works. Is we provide a complete comprehensive platform for our members to deliver cloud solutions. This includes training and certification, advanced level training, access to our cloud solutions platform, access to our community portal, in ongoing sales and marketing support. That's, that's what you get when you become a member of CloudNation. The certification, here's a, a screenshot of our certification, but basically when you go through our Cloud Essentials program, you'll become a CloudNation certified professional. And in addition to being able to tout the fact that you're a CloudNation certified professional, at the end of Q1, at the end of March, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching our, basically our member finder or our member directory. And what that will do is that will allow our members to be in a search online when, if you're in Buffalo, New York, and, and you know, you're, you're an SMB and you're looking for somebody that really understands the cloud and can provide you with, with a comprehensive cloud solution, you can go there and find Cloud Nation members that are certified that you can reach out to. Also, just so, so you understand, I think we've got this in a subsequent slide, is that we are 100% channel focused. In other words, as a company, we don't sell to small and medium-sized businesses. And as such, if we have somebody come to our site and they basically sign up for a free trial, if they're a small and medium-sized business, our job is to get the most appropriate person within our community, within our, our reseller community, that lead so you, you can work directly with that client. Some other questions we've had is specifically is like, okay guys, how, how do we make money on this? And here's just an example here of, of revenue generation. And the here in this example, we've got 10 employees. The cost per virtual desktop here we're saying is, is $80. And so on a monthly charge, this would be $800 for that company, or annualized, it would be $9,600. So again, you set your own margins, but let's just say that you went in here and set your margins at 20%. So on an annual basis, signing up one client with 10 employees, your revenue would be $1,920, and you would be paid that 20% every single month. Your ROI with Cloud Nation is the way that Cloud Nation works is that we have a one-time initiation fee. And that one-time initiation fee is not per user, it's per company. And that it's $2,995. And so from an ROI standpoint is if your average client is, is 10 people and has um, right around $2,000 per year, you would have to sign up one and a half clients to break even on your initial investment in Cloud Nation. Now, if you wanted to go on to subsequent years, we have a $495 per year annual maintenance fee. And if you have sales in excess of $20,000, so that would essentially be two clients or more based on this 
logic, this math, is that we would waive your annual fee. And so at that point, your, your ROI, obviously, it, it goes significantly down. A couple things, as, as I've kind of mentioned, we're 100% channel focused. Uh, our members set their own prices and they own their own clients. Um, you know, really our goal is to come in and, and help to create a community of well-trained, well-supported resellers and MSPs that have the ability to go out and really wow your clients. We want to help you maximize your prof profits and performance and really just grow your business. Um, again, to become a member, there's a one-time initiation fee of $2,995. This includes full access to our portal, initial and ongoing training and certification, sales and marketing support, and a dedicated client success advisor. And we haven't really gone into, in this webinar, a lot on our sales and marketing support, and we really aren't planning on it because really what we wanted to do is focus on the technology and how this worked. In subsequent webinars, we can certainly go into that, but, but for right now, we're just focused on Here's the technology, here's what we provide, here's what your, your clients and prospects can expect. Um, it's, uh, what time is it here? It's 10.43, so um, we want to make sure to get you on your way and back to business here within less than an hour, but we also wanted to leave time for questions. Again, I, I can answer probably more of the business-based questions, and Robert is just phenomenal at the technology questions. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go over to Jenny and say, Jenny, do we have any questions? We do. So let's get started Jeez. here. Okay. Is that 20% included in the cost on the slide? Is the 20% included in the cost? Um, yeah, so basically what, let's go back to the, Let's go back here and say, basically what we do is we provide you with wholesale pricing for your V-Desktop. So in other words, in this scenario, it's probably about $33 would be your wholesale pricing. So what this price here would be is this would be the pr price that you decided that you wanted to charge your client. Very good question. So th th that's the retail price that your client is seeing when you're going in and showing them the menu and making sure that, that you help them to order what they want to order. Do you offer sales and marketing support? More questions, Jenny? Do you offer sales and marketing support? <laughs> we do. We do. And let me break that down um, because sales and marketing are two very different things. Is that from a sales perspective, again, we are a community that is here to support our MSPs and our resellers. And, and we're not in the business of selling directly to businesses. So from a sales perspective, our member directory will allow people to find you and embrace your services. Or if we get leads from a small or medium-sized business, that's our job to pass it along to you. So that's the sales side of it. From a marketing side of it, basically what we're doing is we've got, um, within our portal, you have the ability to upload your clients and your prospects, and on a monthly basis, we'll be sending out a newsletter branded for you specifically to your clients. Now, we have it set up where either you can say automatically send that, or I want to review it first, and then I'll decide if I want to send that out or not. We also, as an example, well, here, let me just go in and, and show just a, a, an example here, if, if, I, if I may. So if we go up here within our portal, and I'll type in postcards. And here we go, and here is an example of postcards that we've created right here for marketing. We have we have these ones that are, are very branded and, and, and I think very memorable, but we also have ones that are a virtual desktop, and it's really up to you. But again, if we wanted to go back and say, here's one postcard, postcard 13002, which is very specific, and right here we say, this is how you would order it. Go here to order it. And so as an example, 
what you would do is if you wanted to order that postcard, you would go right here. You would go to postcards. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm doing it wrong. You go to support. You go to new tickets. You would go here to the priority. You would go here to actually order. And then based on the page I just showed you that you would put the information you need for us to customize that postcard for you. We have the same with, um, we have white papers we do on a monthly basis. The one we're working on right now is, is, is theme is around BYOD and explaining to your clients as an example um, what BYOD is, what kind of constraints they should put on bring your own device, which is basically when when the client's employees are coming to work with tablets and they want to use them, things like that. But yes, we, we provide complete collateral material to support your efforts, including slide decks for your presentations, things like that. Um, and then from the sales side, actually, when the rubber meets the road is we actually are in the business of providing our our members with leads as we get them because, again, we, we don't sell to end users. Any more questions, Jenny? Yes. Cost for the postcard mailing? Sure. <laughs> Great question. Is from a standpoint of the of the direct mail is is that we don't actually um, what we'll do is we'll create the the postcard and we work with a couple printers that are, are very cost effective and we can direct you to those printers or of course you can use your own. And then we've designed the postcards as an example. They're four by six postcards and what the postage for those is 32 cents and that's up to our members to bear the cost of that. We don't, we don't pay for the printing and we don't pay for the, the, the ma mailing of the postcards. We just help to make sure that we're delivering you know, Fortune 50 looking, high quality collateral material specifically for our clients branded on their behalf. All right. Have you published the list? Any more questions, Jenny? Have you published the list of the 250 apps that are currently certified on Cloud Nation? Um, Robert, you want to pick that one up? Yeah, I'll be more than happy to. Uh, it's not uh, available at the moment, but we can easily make it. Uh, that's the first one. And then the second one is um, I, I wanted to uh, express to you if you can um, apply AppV or you're going to virtualize the application, if you have any experience with that, it'll work within our environment. So if you have a history of working with um, uh, terminal services or RDP connections um, to a, uh, a server, or, uh, an R2 server on your current client's environment, then it's going to work. <clears throat> and more importantly, um, uh, Tom will be able to post a link to uh, the Citrix uh, uh, resources that point to the 500, uh, excuse me, 5,200 5, applications that have already been virtualized and certified within a Citrix environment as well. So um, we are not the the mecca of all information on virtualization when it comes to applications. Uh, by by no means, uh, no one group or one company can be. Um, out beyond our community, there's so much available about virtualizations and application challenges. Like, you know, if you have any experiences around printing with Citrix, you know that can be challenging whether you do a uh, direct connection to local devices or do you do a VPN for networks. Or, and, and a lot of these questions and stuff like that that you're going to want to get involved with as you start engaging your customers. These are resources that we have direct uh, um, support with, and how to, you know, put barcode printers in place and those type of things. And th these are all these these uh, on-site challenges that you are bringing value of through Cloud Nation. So the answer is yes to that question, plus so much more. Great answer, Robert. I appreciate that. Right now, for our listeners, I, I imagine you can see our our portal right here. And what I did is I typed in Citrix here. And as you'll see right here, so we've got Citrix ready applications. And basically what we do is we, we click here and then we actually have the ability right here, the URL is, is really helpful um, to understand what applications play nicely with the Citrix receiver, if you will. So you click right here and what it does is it immediately takes you to a link that says there's 5,486 third-party products 
that have been verified by 22,000, almost 23,000 people. So an example, that's just another example of, you know, of how our, our community portal can help. Again, I'll type in Citrix here. And as an example, we talked about Citrix Error 2320. We can go here and we can see specifically what that is and how it works and how you can fix it. So again, what we're, what we're really focused on doing with uh, our entire portal, which is what you're looking at here, is it's been designed kind of from the ground up to be quick and to allow us to leverage the community. In other words, it, this isn't about just Cloud Nation. This is about each and every one of you and, and being able to increase your business. So, Tom, let me um, um, let me let me chime in one more um, regarding this. I think that sure. um, this is a, a very key key um, differentiator between Cloud Nation's uh, platform and what is available out there. Um, yeah, we have 250 plus applications that we've already virtualized and that we can install on your virtual machine and have ready as part of a template, for example. So that would be obviously all the Microsoft products, um, any of the like projects like the, the Adobe products, the QuickBook products, those type of things are already, you know, the cabs are already available and we can install them and have them ready waiting. And then it's up to the reseller to customize them or change them or do what they need to do them. But more importantly, there are so many other applications that are very vertically oriented that we as Cloud Nation, um, you know, it's just too much, so that's where the reseller comes in, and then as the reseller takes control of that VM and installs those, like say PC Law or whatever happens to be that vertical lawyer application they're dealing with, and then they deliver that through our, our mechanism, and that goes to contribute to you know how do we bring out a PC Law application through a, a multi-tenancy virtualized desktop environment to end users, and uh, uh, it's a really great way to give control to the reseller at the place where they need it and not have them spending all their time on what I call ubiquitous or horizontal technologies that support that. Excellent. So Jenny, do we have any more questions? We have quite a few more. So revenue to waive annual fee. <laughs> so, so, um, just like I, 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 before I answer that question, I just wanted for our listeners today, just to say I want to be respectful of everyone's time. It's 10.54, but we do have the ability to go a few minutes more because we, we do want to answer your questions, all of them, especially since we've got Robert here. I know that there's been um, some feedback um, to me, and, and good feedback, frankly, that says, Tom, you've explained the business case really well, but, but we want to know about the technology. So um, again, let's get technical um, or answer any questions you've got about anything else. So I'm sorry, Jenny. Can you come at me with the question again? No problem. Revenue to waive annual fee, was that 20K a month or 20K a year? That's $20,000 a year. So in other words, let's, let's go back and, and we'll just take a look at it really quickly just so it, it makes complete sense. Is, so if we take a look at this example here, is this is a, um, a company that's got 10 employees it's $800 a month or $9,600 a year is the annual charge. So if you had two of these, that would be $19,000. So it's, it, it'd be you know, one company with 10 employees, another with 12, and, and basically if you're able to maintain, in this case, those two clients, then we would waive that $495 annual maintenance fee. Great. I'm ready for I'm ready for more. All right. The trial was a client side trial, not an admin provider. Will there be a provider trial? I, I'll answer that one. Um, uh, absolutely. But uh, the, the the challenge there with that, and I would I would ask the the listeners here to really think about what that means. Um, you're absolutely going to be receiving a a hosted. Uh, uh, server, a VM, a Windows 2008 R2 server, uh, with local admin rights, um, uh, isolated in, a, in a, a VLAN that's specifically designated into um, a multi-tenancy environment. Um, that in and of itself is, I hope that folks that are out there have had some level of terminal services or just RDP connections in, it, it, in and of itself it doesn't do much, right? It, you can 
load office and those type of things, and you know that's all going to work. What what the trial or the onboarding of Cloud Nation really is about is about you coming into this ecosystem and saying, hey, when I decide I join Cloud Nation, these are all the tools that I get. Um, you know, you could easily go over to Rackspace and get the same thing for that that virtual machine. What you don't get with it is that all that other pieces that are part of a turnkey monthly service um, that you plug into. When you took the end user trial piece, that is basically to demonstrate how easy it is to connect to our environment from a Citrix client anywhere, any, anywhere, any place, right? The 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 back end piece um, for you to provision a server to get it spun up and to start testing those applications and stuff like that, that's your job every day, whether it's on premise or it's in the cloud. It works the same. Um, so yeah, we'd be more than happy to do that for you, but I'd ask you to really think about once you did get it, what are you going to do with the past then? How are you going to start working within the environment? And that's really what this whole training process is about. This is about what this learning process and coming on the Cloud Nation uh, fundamentally is. Great answer, Robert. And I just wanted to point out something else is that um, we let anybody sign up for a free trial. And I think we're, we're unique with that, that you know, you, you want 30 days, go in there and, and use our virtual desktop, see how it works on your iPad and your iPod and your Android and your, your laptop. Um, for, for those that are interested in rolling up their sleeves and getting into the, the reseller, the more admin environment, what you'll have to do is you'll have to reach out to us and let us know and we'll talk with you, we'll provision that and we'll move forward. Now the only thing you need to know to get that message to us is support at cloudnation.co. And what happens is when you send an email to support at cloudnation.co, it immediately establishes a support ticket. We'll reach out, we'll contact you, we'll get that set up. So absolutely, we'd love to be able to do that. Jenny, any more questions? What bandwidth requirements should we expect at client sites? I think I think that, but I, I, I think just yeah okay. um, yeah let me let me talk about that that's now these are very um, well established and published uh, bandwidth uh, requirements that are at the client locations and um, they're based on uh, whether or not they're doing high volumes of printing you know for example we have a publisher who does a bunch of printing on site and that takes up a significant more bandwidth than just people who are using laptops or thin client devices, et cetera. But your um, Citrix would be more than happy to publish it. I don't have these, these numbers off the top of my head, but the Citrix receiver is the piece that handles 100% um, of all of the applications and data being delivered. So for example, if someone's using a hosted desktop and they're browsing the internet or they're going to the internet, they're not technically using the internet uh, going browsing the internet through their own office. They're actually using our data center's internet connection and just the screen images are brought down. So, so the bandwidth requirements are often significantly reduced depending on, um, on the uh, on-site you know, printing versus uh, scanning, those type of things. So um, I think that's a tie down that we'd more be happy to post up, Tom, in our, in our stats, but uh, we have a metrics that we have. I don't have them available at the moment. Yeah, you know what we'll do is we'll put that in the knowledge base. And, and just for our listeners, one of the things that we're looking to do, and I don't know if we're quite ready for that yet, but what we'll eventually do is, is we'll have two kinds of knowledge that's available. Knowledge that's available exclusively to our members, and we look at that as a competitive kind of advantage. And then we'll also have a knowledge base that we actually publish directly out to the internet, which is open and available for everybody. But in terms of, of the question as it relates to bandwidth, is as an example, that's something that probably by tomorrow will be in our knowledge base. Um, so appreciate the question, it's a good one. Um, Jenny, more questions? What about reverse backups? Do you allow that? Uh, yeah, we do, and in a number of ways, actually. So uh, by default, the uh, infrastructure that's provided for Cloud Nation has um, what we call Active Live, and we use the um, uh, file shadowing that's available with inside you know, a Windows server where you right-click on it, and you can re restore previous versions. Those are all uh, stored up, and if you're familiar with that and you have some basic knowledge of Windows servers, you can 
um, recover all of your, your backups right there live and not have to involve you or others as you train your users. But let's say that you want a little bit more of that security that, um, uh, that a lot of clients just they, they absolutely have to have a copy of their data on premise. Um, there are a number of products that we support that would allow you to connect um, into our data center and replicate down um, either using a live appliance um, or an actual software that goes back down to maybe the server that you moved off of. So for example, say you're going from an on-premise server environment, you're going into our cloud. You can reprovision that server that you left behind and keep data on it and then replicate back and forth using a number of synchronization products. Um, if you have one that you're particularly comfortable with, no problem. We'll set up the credentials and put a VPN in place to allow you to replicate back and forth and you can manage it yourself. Um, if you want something recommended from us, we'd be more than happy to do that as well. Thanks, Robert. One of the things that I wanted to um, also kind of note, and it, it kind of made maybe the, it, the foundation of the question that was just asked, was that you know what a lot of people with the cloud are there's there's vendors out there that are doing what they call vendor lock, which <laughs> basically means once it goes up, it, it doesn't come back down. And one of the things that we focused on from a standpoint of enabling and, and empowering our members is that number one is there, there's no long-term contracts. Everything's a 30-day deal. If, if we're performing as a company, if you're performing as a reseller, you know, that will continue for a long time. It's a great opportunity. But but also is we don't own the data. The, the client owns the data and there's no vendor lock. And if they want to if they want to back up the, their data is is absolutely backed up real time all the time. However, if they want to have their own data on premises, happy to help facilitate that as well. Yeah, and Tom, I wanted to um, chime, in, chime in one more piece here, if, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, that was a really good question in that um, let's say that one of our members has discovered a technology that really works well, and they want to share it with the community. And they want to type and they say, hey, XYZ um, software app replicates really well back and forth. You don't need an appliance. It goes down to the thing. It uses low bandwidth and does incrementals really nicely. It's way better than system center DPM. Um, whatever the reasons, they can post that knowledge base and then we can have that available to the other clients that are out there, the other members, so that they can leverage that as well. And, and, and this, this is a huge benefit of this collective is to be able to drive that knowledge out to its members. Excellent point, Robert. And, and again, what we've seen with communities is, is the fact that the cloud is literally it's so wide and so deep and there are so many things going on that, that none of us can be expected to know everything. But what we've done is we've put together a, a portal that allows the collective knowledge of our community to grow, to be a live, living, breathing thing that basically embraces issues real time as they happen and allows us to put it into our community portal. So excellent point, Robert. Um, Jenny, is there any, any other questions? Month to month agreement can be canceled at any time. Are there any penalties for canceling? Nope, no penalties. Pretty simple stuff is that if, if, if your client signs up and, um, and they, that they can do a couple different things is number one is it, it, let's just say a company signed up and they signed 20 people in their company and and you know the recession hit and they needed to to back off they could come in and say well we're, we're immediately effective immediately we're changing from 20 to, to 7 or if if the company goes out of business or they decide that there's another option out there that works better for them they are on a month-to-month -month basis there are no long-term contracts and there are no early termination provisions, if you will. Any more questions, Jenny? Oh, are you there, Tom? Quick difference between a terminal server and... I am, yep. Okay, quick difference between a terminal server and VDI. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in on that one for you. Um, so if it looks like we got about uh, quite a few people still on the call here, so that means that there are uh, a lot more questions. I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to take a minute or so to make sure we understand the distinction between a VDI and a terminal services or a shared infrastructure. 
A VDI is, in terms out there, is basically a separate Windows virtual machine. So a Windows 7 or even a Windows 8 machine that's hosted, it had its, its own virtual machine that runs in on a hypervisor, and you can have 10 of them on one, one hypervisor, one host, you can have 20 of them, you know. Uh, there are companies out there that specialize in that. Um, and then a, a hosted desktop um, inside a, a shared environment, a terminal services RDP environment, is one server and people are logging in, um, maybe 20 people into one server and you're having a shared environment, the look and feel of it is very similar um, to a Windows environment. You, clients often have no idea that they're not on a dedicated Windows environment. So um, the key piece here is that um, when you have a Windows 7 or 8 VM environment, the, the challenge here is that the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft platform uh, licensing is very restrictive when it comes to VDI uh, applications running inside a dedicated Windows environment. So, so for example, um, the licensing around a VDI platform is a enterprise level uh, version of Windows plus a uh, software assurance and it has to be dedicated to a specific host, so it can't be on any hard, other hardware. So the economics around doing that are, are very prohibitive for anybody with fewer than 50 desktops. Um, more importantly, it's not really a very good solution on top of that because it tends to be very, very data intensive, the drive, the cost, the management, of trying to speed that stuff up. So if you're thinking about doing a VMware View or a Zen desktop or a Quest uh, hosted desktop, that type of thing, um, there are some significant licensing issues involved and cost issues involved when you try to do that versus what we're doing, which is a, a hosted shared environment. And if you're familiar with VDI world stuff, and you may know a guy named Brian Madden. He's a nonpartisan uh, virtual desktop uh, kind of uh, leader out there, thought leadership. And he produced a, and published a book called The VDI Delusion. And I highly recommend folks get it and read it, and it will understand the differences between a shared infrastructure like what we have versus the VDI um, uh, infrastructure, which is being pushed by a lot of you know, um, groups that want you to spend a lot of money on hardware, really. Uh, but at the back, at the end of the day, you want to have a shared infrastructure because there's a lot of economies of scale that are available to you. Excellent. And, and I just I want to interject a couple of things. Number one is, I, Robert, I just I just went and grabbed a cup of coffee, and you probably heard some background noise, <laughs> so I officially got busted. <laughs> My apologies. Um, and then bounce back to Jenny and just to say, uh, uh, Jenny, do you have another question for us? I sure do. How does this compare to the Intel hybrid cloud? That's an interesting question. Um, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I know about uh, anecdotally, and I met with the Intel folks at our last um, SMB Nation um, Expo and talked about that product, et cetera. And it's a great product. It's still a hardware-based uh, streamed delivery of applications down to devices on premise. It is a hardware on premise. The, the, you still have servers. You still have uh, endpoint devices, et cetera, that are necessary. Uh, you're licensing software and you're buying it from a store, um, which is uh, an interesting concept and, and style. But what its, its challenges are is that you're still dealing with uh, CapEx investment of hardwares. You're still dealing with on-premise um, uh, uh, implementations of, of your vertical applications. Um, they're not you're, you're restricted to the amount of compute power and scalability that you're going to be having. So let's say that here's a real, here's a real important distinction. Let's say that uh, uh, towards the end of the year, you need to scale up your server um, uh, for your line of business to, from 8 gig to 16 gig to take on the load that's happening for a particular customer. Let's say they have a big spike in business. Um, that's going to be really tough if you've got to go buy more hardware. Uh, that's not the case here with her, um, with Cloud Nation specifically because you put in a request and say, "Hey, I need to move my uh, move my um, my resources up on my my servers, and this is what's happening. I'm I, I'm not getting the response I need. I need to add more high speed um, uh, SAN storage for my SQL servers, etc. This is 
these are the, the, the benefits you get from working in this kind of environment. Thanks, Robert. And, and I just wanted to inject something here, and this is just kind of an analogy, but it may, it may be fitting, is that prior to the, um, to the iPod and, and iTunes, there were a lot of MP3 players out there, but the reality is, is there wasn't a, a cohesive, comprehensive place to plug in and get all your stuff done. And then all of a sudden, iTunes came along, and, and they basically created an environment that made it eloquent and, and easy and fun to work in. And really with Cloud Nation, when we started down this path a year ago, it was reseller-centric, and it was really designed to provide our resellers with that iTunes environment, if you will, that, that's a comprehensive environment that allows you to go out directly to your prospects and clients and provide a, a, a robust solution immediately. And, and kind of where I'm going with that is that here are kind of the stats is that in the next 36 months, the majority of SMBs will have transitioned to the cloud and in whatever capacity that is, all cloud, hybrid, whatever. Um, those that are going to transition, transition will have transitioned it. And, I, and, and the point there is, is this is an incredible opportunity for you as IT pros to go out there and, and basically sign up not only your existing clients but new prospects because what happens is once they, once they transition into this, they're going to be with it if we do a good job, both us and you, for a long time. And this is the ability to lock in long-term annuity-based revenue. And that's, that's just kind of a pitch for the money side of it, even though today we're talking more about, about the technology side. So I'll stop there. <laughs> um, Jenny, more questions? Of course. Is Peachtree Accounting already certified? And I think this goes back to when we were talking about the apps. Yes. Um, when you're dealing with um, anything other than Microsoft and Citrix products, so for example, if you want to deploy Office in our environment, um, you need to use our SPLA or, or our monthly, monthly rental of that. There are exceptions to it, um, such as somebody already has enterprise agreements with their clients and they're delivering, and they already have software assurance, then we can move those licensings. Otherwise, you have to use the Cloud Nation relationship that's with Microsoft for the monthly um, charges for those, as well as with Citrix. Um, Citrix uh, has an SPLA program in place where that Zen app and the connections to the Zen app and the, and the usage of the uh, Cloud Portal Services Manager are a part of a monthly structure. So those two main players have their structure. However, when you start moving into Adobe products uh, as well as um, Sage, um, uh, Intuit, et cetera, and stuff, then you're dealing with licensing, and that is the responsibility of the reseller to make sure that those proper licensings are involved so that when you do install that stuff on your servers that it's legal and then that you are the responsible party to make sure that uh, that, that transfer license are going into the environment and then that when they sign on and they're using this, that software that it's all up and up. Excellent. Jenny, we're ready for more questions. All right. I understand right now you have to choose a virtual desktop option. Any timeline of using other options without requiring B desktop? So I guess I don't understand that question. They want to be able to access it outside of the Citrix environment. Um, I guess technically they could use uh, RDP to go to it, but uh, it, it doesn't reduce the price any. Um, you still, you still the, our bundle is a is a includes a Citrix piece to it. Um, there, are, and I'm not understanding so much the question as it is to what other options there would be to accessing it. I mean, maybe if there's an ERCOM connection or potentially a Quest connection, we don't have those, we don't support those um, virtualization technologies today. We're a Citrix um, certified uh, uh, premier partner and we deliver through that method. You know what, actually I have, I have a, a thought or a suggestion. I mean, that's a very specific question and, it is. and, and maybe what, Robert, what you could do is drill down a little deeper. So the listener that asked that question if you wouldn't mind, shoot an email to robert at 
cloudnation.co. Yep. And um, maybe maybe you guys can connect one on one and go through that in a little bit more detail and just really figure out how to answer that question specifically for the the listeners kind of yeah. use. That, that's a great idea because I, I, I'm a little confused as to what other options there would be to connect. Okay, excellent. Jenny? What kind of pipe does Cloud Nation have? There's a few of them. Um, depends on which part of the pipe you're talking about. Um, uh, there's the inbound or the uh, uh, connection that we offer inbound and outbound to the data centers through the Citrix receiver. Um, those will be through portals. So there is a portal.cloudnation.co, which is our generic portal, which the demo, if you had a demo system, you went in through that way. Uh, that is a unlimited pipe to our data centers that are bursable up to 100 gig per, per data center. Um, and we have each data center has 11 ISPs and uh, connections into those facilities so that um, when or fall or fail, the other ones are picked up based on that, that relationship with that uh, facility. Um, on the, the pipe for the actual client itself, which they're on the, the virtual desktop, they're inside, and let's say they inside the virtual desktop and they, they start up a browser that goes to like a NetSuite or a Salesforce or a QuickBooks or something like that online, um, that has another 100 gig uh, uh, up and down speeds also supported with the ISP um, and the relationships that we have with the facilities. Um, so we separate those two traffic. So they are not running on the same line. They don't go through the same routers. They don't go to the same switches. Um, all that traffic is separated so that one doesn't uh, in, uh, overlap or cause problems with the other. Excellent. So just for our listeners, and by the way, I, I completely, completely love your questions. and, and um, it's 1118. Um, I need to run to a meeting here at about 1130. So we've got about 12 more minutes. And then I guess what I would offer is if there's more questions, um, send them in to support at cloudnation.co and we'll, we'll hit them head on. We'll answer each one individually. And then also um, next week, um, we're going to be doing another webinar, same time, same station, Wednesday, 10 o'clock. And my guess is, based on all the questions, Robert, is that we should um, we should continue along this theme and maybe add some things. But um, yeah, your questions yeah. are all great, and I really appreciate them. So, Jenny, do we have any um, any more questions? We do. In sorry, we've got some construction here in the office. It's a little loud. Um, in reference to the last question regarding if we must choose the virtual desktop option. I think what we are wondering is if we can just choose an option for file storage like a mapped network drive. Okay, so this would be like a, a similar um, cloud storage solution if you're connecting to um, an AWS or, uh, for that matter, you know, some rack space where you've got a set of a server for just for storage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's you know, push up the data and keep it up there and map the drive up there. That's obviously available and open to you all. And there's a lot of different technologies that we support that, that you can handle that. So that's really the reseller's call to do that. Um, and that might be the initial beachhead or that first toe in the, in the, in the pool, if you would, for what it is that we're offering. Um, we also have other what I call beachhead or toes in the pool methods. We have hosted Exchange 2010, hosted CRM. Uh, actual hosted servers, if you had uh, particular pieces around those. Uh, there's a number of different things. If you have an ISV, for example, like a, an independent software vendor who has um, a really specific version of their software that needs to be delivered from the cloud with a browser, for example. Let's say that's an older browser and it has to be plugins and stuff, and um, they want to be able to deliver that through the cloud. We can host that uh, Internet Explorer or the Mozilla or the Chrome or whatever and just deliver that piece to them. So there's a lot of options. So if they want to send in what their requirements are, and you can send them to me directly at Robert at cloudnation.co, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Great. Do you provide tech support for back-end issues? Example, if a client states things are running slow, do you help identify a resolution, maybe memory upgrades, etc.? Absolutely. Um, I, I'd actually um, even offer you a better solution. Um, we, 
we are giving you the ability to go straight into that particular server, have a look at the task manager, look at where the resources are going, find out if uh, there's a runaway process. You yourself can kill it, restart it. You'll be able to enable or disable or disengage your Citrix clients, re-enable them, get them started again. Um, what you don't want to do, what we found here when, we're, when you're providing an infrastructure like we, we have, is you don't want to have Cloud Nation in the way of you solving your customer's problem right then. You don't want to have to submit a ticket or dial and try to wait on the phone or you know, whatever. You know, we have great customer support, but boy, isn't it nice if you can do exactly what you're doing right now on premise? You dial into the server, you handle the situation remotely, you go to their endpoint devices, you handle that remotely. Um, that's what, we're, that's what we're talking about here is that you have that kind of control over our platform for that first level support. Let's say it's something much more deeper though and, you're, and we're getting what we call noisy neighbor problems like you might be on the same hardware as some other uh, VM that's really taxing the system. That's when we step in and we can help you and we'll be able to what we call <laughs> separate the two people, the, the, the fighting VMs for the capacity and we'll really address them what, the, what the issues are. But at the first level I think the reseller really wants that control. Excellent. Um, Jenny, we've got time for maybe one or two more, um, and then we've, we've, we've got to run. But um, I completely appreciate it. Does this work well for real-time data scanning, um, et cetera, manufacturing, as an example? Well, the real-time scanning in a manufacturing facility, there's a lot of different different issues. You have barcode readers and handheld devices. You have possibly things that are on conveyors that are going past readers, etc. Um, I'm, I'm personally, we are in a number of manufacturing facilities and warehouses. We handle barcoders very well um, and barcode readers and devices. The, the solution is a little bit more complicated than I want to go into on the phone here. We handle that and if the person who's um, asking that question can send me an email at robert at cloudnation.co. I'll be more than happy to get on the phone with you and talk about what it is you're trying to do um, because there are some definite potholes that you got to watch out for. Excellent. So Jenny, maybe what we can do is we can take one last question um, and then I, I want to just I want to kind of summarize our, our webinar today and then for again for anyone that's listening today um, we're going to be doing the same thing again next Wednesday at the same time, and I would invite you, um, heck, to continue to join us until we've, we've answered your questions and until, uh, you know, hopefully we've um, helped you to understand Cloud Nation well enough that it makes sense for you to take the next step and, um, and actually become a member. So let's, let's take one more question. If a client leaves, how do they get their data back? Great question. Um, we have a uh, what we call a um, uh, vacating policy where that when you stop paying you have an off-ramp period of 90 days that we uh, work with you to give you uh, media to move it off or you can pull it down if it's small enough over the wire to get it done that way as well. Um, when you're dealing, if you've done any kind of BDR solution out on the internet today, you know how much, uh, you know, 50 gig or 100 gig or 500 gig is going to take over the wire. It's just it's just ridiculously slow. So you're going to have to do some kind of storage media to move it off. We'll be more than happy to facilitate that that data to be put on those facilities and ship it to you. Um, that's our policy and our terms and conditions with all our customers is when they still have 90 days after the termination of our monthly agreement. Excellent, excellent. Well, maybe what I can do is kind of put a cap on today's webinar and first and foremost just say for our listeners, thanks for joining us today. It really, it, it means a lot. Um, your, your interest, your questions, um, I, I just really, really appreciate them. Um, from a standpoint of Cloud Nation and who we are, and this is kind of the, <laughs> the end of the webinar shameless plug, is that we really think we have a, a great offering and we're really excited to work with you to provide you with what you need to become members of Cloud Nation and, and get you up and operating in, in your neighborhood so that you can be the first on the street with, um, with a comprehensive cloud solution. So I um, want to thank Robert for joining us today, for Jenny for doing such a great job as she always does facilitating the questions. And then um, just if, if you have any, any questions at all, um, Robert's email is robert at 
cloudnation.co, not .com, but .co, and my email is tom at cloudnation.co. By all means, send us an email, or if you want to shoot it into our, our support department, our support team gets met, support at cloudnation.co. So again, thank you so much for joining and all your questions, and we look forward to talking to you more about becoming members of Cloud Nation.